Happy Easter. You all look so nice today. I'm liking the blazers and some ties. Um, I'm going to invite everybody to stand up. Would you say hello to somebody around you? Would you greet somebody this morning and tell them the Lord is risen? with us this morning or you're a family or friend in town, I just want to welcome you here. I want to say we're so glad that you're here at St. Philip's with us today to celebrate Easter. We certainly have so much that we're going to celebrate today. Um, If you're new, I'll just tell you a little bit about our worship here. We tend to do, we kind of mix some older songs with some newer songs. We throw in a few hymns and then we throw in a few like contemporary modern songs. We kind of try to hit all the different sides of worship that there is. So we're going to start this morning with a a song from the 1700s. Sorry to get nerdy with you for a minute. Written by Charles Wesley, who is an incredible man. Um, It's a song from the 1700s. Christ the Lord is risen today. It's a classic Easter hymn. We're going to do a slightly modern version of it. So let's worship together this morning. worship God together. Let's sing this out. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing in heaven's and earth
worship you today. Thank you so much for what you have done. this room right now would you close your eyes and bow your heads and between you and the Lord would you bring him your thanks today for what he's done he died for you 
and he rose again that you might have life eternal with him he conquered death thank you God we pause today we just pause our our hearts our lives our thoughts to, to look to you and say thank you we worship you Let's pray together as a church family this morning, the prayer of the day. This is something we do every week at St. Philip's, and um, it's from the Book of Common Prayer. This prayer is prayed all at churches all over the world. So let's join as one family today and pray this together. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning for announcements. Happy Easter. Thanks for being with us this morning as we worship the Lord. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, if you're part of our St. Philip's family or if you're here visiting or from out of town, thank you so much for joining us for this service. Uh, I've got a handful of announcements this morning. Uh, first, for, for everybody, but especially for kids, uh, our kids camp registration goes live tomorrow, April 1st. So. If you don't know about Kids Camp, uh, four, five, six hundred uh, elementary and preschool kids and another couple hundred high school, middle school kids invade and take over this whole campus in June. It's an amazing week. Um, we'd love everybody to be there. Uh, this year's theme, Mr. Phillips Neighborhood. So there will be songs, there will be fun, there will be cardigans. You don't want to miss uh, Mr. Phillips Neighborhood. Uh, so that starts, uh, sign-up starts tomorrow. Then uh, we're having a fundraiser uh, at Permanis, uh April 4th, so that's Thursday. If you go to the Permanis on University Boulevard and bring a flyer either from the bulletin or just show the picture on our website, you can show it on your phone. Um, either way, they'll give 20% of all the proceeds towards Kids Camp, so stop by Permanis on Thursday. Uh, we also have a concert coming up, so uh, Jade's band uh, is called The Band Table. Music uh, worship leaders from all over the country have formed this uh, band, and they're partnering with another band called Stars Go Dim, and it's going to be a free concert here on April 20th. So we would love for you to come to bring tons of friends. Uh, let's fill this place up. Uh, the band table was here a couple years, or yeah, band table was here a couple years ago. A great concert, uh, very high quality music. So please come April 20th. Um, <clears throat> we have a few blessing bags out in the uh, lobby as you go out the door. You can grab one of those bags if you like, and there's instructions inside about filling them up to bless the homeless. So I encourage you to take one of those. And then um, our annual Harvest Moon race, which is in November, uh, the registration is already opened. So if you're a runner or a walker, we'd love for you to join that, and that supports our youth ministry. Finally, before you leave church today, feel free to use our Easter backdrop out in the lobby. Great opportunity when everybody is uh, looking their best to have a family photo. So um, take a picture today. Those are all the announcements, and now it's time for our reading. Good morning, happy Easter. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 15. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. 
His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the government, governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was up early driving around, and you know what was interesting? There was hardly anybody out on the roads, like around quarter to seven in the morning on Easter Sunday. The hotels were filled. Who's staying in these hotels? Is it sports? I'm not, I don't really know what it is. So happy Easter to you. I'm glad to be here on this Easter Sunday to celebrate it with you. I read an article recently about a woman by the name of Lauren. And I think you pronounce her last name Hove, Lauren Hove, a 28-year-old book blogger from Scandinavia who had herself euthanized given her uh, struggles with chronic fatigue syndrome. I just want to read part of this article to you. This will be my last tweet, she tweeted on the day of her death. Thanks for the love, everyone. I'm going to rest a bit more and be with my loved ones. Her final tweet, which was received over 11,000 likes, included a meme with the caption, me getting euthanized, and showed a child wearing sunglasses giving a thumbs up to a doctor. ME is a dis dis disabling illness that often presents people from doing their usual activities and may confine them to bed. On her blog, Hove posted an entry three days before the procedure saying, I think I'm going back to what it was like before I was born. No existence, no consciousness, ultimate peace. It's a hard article to read, right? And I don't want to diminish any of this woman's pain. I don't want to diminish any of her suffering or anguish. But what's clear is that she believed that her own dying would end her pain, it would end her suffering, and would take her back to, in her words, what it was like before. Ultimate peace, no consciousness. Uh, she probably believed that, you know, at death, everything ends. She probably believed that this life is all there is. But what if Lauren is wrong? What if Lauren is wrong? And what if there's life after death for all of us, each and every soul who's ever lived? 
Um, put it matter a diff little different way, way. I was looking on social media, saw this meme quoting C.S. Lewis, of course. There's never a service without quoting C.S. Lewis. But C.S. Lewis says, you are a body who happen, you are not a body who happens to have a soul. He said, you are a soul who happens to have a body. Think about that for a second. You are a soul who just happens to have a body. To put the matter still in a different way, all of us are going to have to die. And all of us will rise. Some to the kingdom of heaven and some to an eternal existence completely cut off from God and all that he's made. To carry on Lewis's thinking in his famous essay, I paraphrase him, you will either rise to glory where you will be and you will become all that God made you to be, or you will rise unto separation from God where you will be and become a more hideous version of yourself than you or anyone might ever imagine. And if I'm correct here, and I think I am correct, yes, she will die. But what will you rise to? What will you rise to? And here's the crazy part about all of this. You make the choice. I make the choice for me, you make the choice for you. And the story about the resurrection really begins the day before. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, he said he would rise on the third day. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people he's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Take a guard, go make the tomb as secure as you know how to. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. So Matthew's gospel includes a lot of different details that some of the other gospel writers don't include around the events of Holy Week. So Matthew tells us that when the, you know, the sky grew dark, he tells us that when Jesus was crucified, the temple veil, which was four feet thick, was ripped from the top to the bottom. <clears throat> Matthew tells us that after the resurrection, there were people, dead people, who were seen resurrected and walking around Jerusalem. Crazy stuff. And Matthew includes this detail. The Pharisees go to Pilate, and Pilate says, go ahead, whatever you need. Make the tomb as secure as you know how. And so Pilate gives them a Roman guard. He gives them a Roman seal. To mess with the tomb was punishable by death. To break a Roman seal was punishable by death. To interfere with these soldiers and their work was punishable by death. The tomb of Jesus was under a Roman guard. And I'm grateful for this detail. Uh, the words of Pilate, go make the tomb as secure as you know how. Those words have rung through history. The next day, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb, which is interesting. I don't know if you ever thought about this part of the story before, but I mean, I stopped. And um, these women waited. Jesus dies on a Friday. He's partially anointed or embalmed on Friday, but then they don't come back until Sunday. These women don't come back until Sunday. Why would you wait if this was somebody you loved? And the answer is the Sabbath observation, right? The Sabbath happens. Um, 
This is really beyond our ability to understand. Here are two women who love Jesus. I mean, they'd given up everything to follow him. They'd nailed their colors to the mast of his boat. And yet, even these women, in, with their great grief and their great love for Jesus, still keep the Sabbath. Man, that would be good if we got that going on around here, right? Maybe I, I get you to come to church more than once or twice a month. This aspect of the Um, resurrection story is hard for us to relate to, but I love their courage. These women were courageous. They were up before it was light, and to get to the tomb where Jesus' body was put out, which was a cave basically cut out of limestone, they would have had to pass outside the city gates and right past the place where Jesus was crucified. And as they walked along, their concern was, who will, how, what are we going to do about the stone? There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the tomb, the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Israel is a geologically volatile place. Earthquakes, believe it or not, happen all the time there. The Jordan Rift Valley is actually part of a larger uh, rift valley called the Sino-African Depression. And so the father had provided for these two women, right? He had sent an earthquake, and then he had sent an angel of the Lord who came down and rolled back the stone and sat on it. And I've never landed on that phrase. The angel of the Lord rolled back the stone and sat on it. But this Easter, I'm going to sit on that phrase for just a little bit. Because if you ever want a symbol If you want a symbol for the resurrection or a sign to hang on to that death was incapable of keeping Jesus in the tomb, then this is it. For when the women made their way past the cross of Jesus and down to the stone, what they saw was this angel perched on top of that stone sitting on it. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. So whenever you're struggling, whenever you're doubting, whenever you're hurting, whenever you're faced with difficulty, get that picture in your mind. And honestly, I looked. I went online. I thought, surely someone's already made millions of dollars on some really cool Christian jewelry. But there is no jewelry. There really is no symbol that's out there that is of an angel sitting on a stone, right? A stone that had been rolled away. The stone that represents so many things. The stone that represents loss and the stone that represents grief and the stone that represents uh, death and hopelessness. It is nothing. Those things are nothing compared to what Jesus does in his resurrection. And they are symbolized by this angel sitting on top of all of our greatest concerns, all of our greatest problems. And I want you to know, don't, let's not be confused here, that the angel rolled the stone away not so that Jesus would, could get out. You know that, right? And that he wasn't in there going, hey, hey, I, no, it, The angel rolls the stone away so the women can look in, see, see the place where he lay. Yeah. For the rest of their lives, they would be able to give that testimony. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said. Come see the place where he lay and go quickly and tell his disciples. 
He's risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. I like the now I've told you phrase. Now I've told you. Like there's been some pretty important angelic messages going around, right? During this little span of history. Consider uh, the angel that speaks to Zechariah in the temple. Consider the angel who announced to Mary that she'd have a child. And now, maybe the most important message any angel could deliver. Uh, all these prime, prime trucks, these FedEx trucks that drive around, I don't know if you've watched, Michelle probably, she's an expert at this stuff, but they take, they'll put the box on your front porch and then they'll take a picture of it like, to prove, to prove like they've, they've delivered your box, right? Well, this is that angel. Now I have told you, message delivered. I did not screw this up. And God's not afraid of science. Come see the place where he lay. The tomb was empty. Something was happening. But what? This news, this, this gospel that changes lives and imparts hope had been delivered to its first recipients who were afraid and yet filled with joy. What's that like, to be afraid and yet filled with joy at the same uh, time? So the women hurried from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples, and suddenly Jesus met them. Hi. That's what he said. He said, hi. He said, greetings. And they came to him, clasped his feet, worshiped him, and Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. There's nothing like the real thing, right? I'll call my son this afternoon, but I won't get to hug his neck. It's a very, very different thing. The empty tomb is good. The empty tomb is hopeful, but it's the reconnection with Jesus personally that changed everything. And none of the accounts of Easter that you read about in the Bible, none of the disciples got it. None of these disciples expected him to be risen from the dead. But there it is, he's alive. And they were witnesses to that reality. Ever since you were a child and you woke up one morning and you realized Death's a real thing. And holy cow. And you realized maybe even people that you love may die. That's been the question. It's the human question. And in Easter, Jesus answers that question. He died, and so will we. He rose, and so will we. But to what? The Old Testament is somewhat vague about life after death, about heaven. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely in there, but it's certainly not spelled out like Jesus spelled it out for his uh, disciples. So, for example, we know that the Jewish Sadducees, right, a whole religious party of Jews, did not believe in the resurrection. And we didn't take this section as we raced through Matthew in 11 weeks, but chapters 23, 24, and 25, right before what we read this morning and the account of the crucifixion, it's called Jesus' last discourse, his fifth and final discourse in Matthew. And it's all about um, end of things, the end of things. And Jesus absolutely dispels the idea that this life, that this world, is all that there is. In those chapters, he says stuff like, you know, hey, the Son of Man's going to come back in his glory. He'll sit on his throne. All the nations will be gathered before him. Oh, yeah, and he's going to separate the sheep from the goats, right? In the upper room, Jesus tells his disciples that he is going away to prepare a place for them. And to the thief on the cross... Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus is very clear. 
that this life isn't all that there is, but that all of us will die and all of us will rise. And because our hero, representative man, the second Adam, succeeds where the first Adam fails and emerges victorious, he's opened up for us the way to walk through death, trusting in what he has done so that he might transform us into what he originally meant for us to be. And in Matthew's story, we hear twice his short account. We hear it on the lips of the angel, and we hear it on the lips of Jesus. Do not be afraid. A life lived with Jesus means you do not have to be afraid. To die in Christ means you do not have to be afraid. In the resurrection and at the judgment, again, with Jesus, you have nothing to fear. Hey, it's Sunday, right? It's Easter. It's business day for me, right? It's a pretty important one. But what do you expect Eric to talk about if he stands up in church this morning? How serious are you about this, Eric? Do you really believe this stuff? Or are you just, my answer, hey, I bury people. And I don't know about you, but in the casino of living this life, I've got all my chips on Jesus. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, that you're going to finish what you started in all of us. You know, I commend myself to you yet again this morning, Jesus. I want to follow you. I want you to be my Lord. And I pray that the hope of the resurrection, Lord, would rise in our hearts and that that hope would drive away whatever fears we're hanging on to this morning. Pray this in your name and for your sake. Amen. We are going to have an offering. And uh, this is a great time to go downstairs and get your kids before we gather around the communion table.
tree the man of God was crucified and he went Thank you, worship team. That was amazing. Really appreciate that. Let's stand for communion. <clears throat> uh, at St. Philip's, uh, this is the Lord's table. And so if you are a follower of Jesus, whatever church you may belong to, even if you're visiting with us today, you're welcome to come and receive. Uh, the, the body and the bread, uh, the bread and the wine. Um, if you want to come forward and not receive uh, the elements, you can still come forward if you like and just cross your arms over your chest and the pastor will just say a quick blessing over you, uh, but you are welcome here today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good, Father, to give you thanks and praise, most especially today, because Jesus is alive. There is no grave that can hold him down, and all of his people are alive with him forever. On the night that our Lord was handed over to suffering and death, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples. He said, take and eat, because this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Whenever you drink this, remember me. Lord, we pray that this Easter Sunday you would send your Spirit on these gifts, that we may all be filled afresh with your life and goodness. All this we ask, Father, through your Son, Jesus. By him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Lord, now and forever. Amen. And now as Jesus has taught us, we're bold to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them today in remembrance that Jesus really died and really rose for you. Please be seated.
When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history They made for sinners For every curse His blood atoned One final breath And it was finished But not the end We could have known For the earth began to shake and the veil was torn what sacrifice was made as the heavens
Till I lay my head, I will say of the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, and in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, all my life you have been faithful, God, all my life you have been so
good to celebrate good news with you on this Easter 2024. Please stand and receive the God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. Let's sing our final song. Don't forget to take pictures. People worked hard on this stuff, so take advantage. Um, if you're a guest with us or you're new here at St. Philip's, um, we allow the kids to come up and dance at the end. So um, kids, you are welcome to come up and dance. We all only ask that they be careful of the candles up here.
turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can.